Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a cubic equation with complex numbers. Isn't that crazy? We're going to be solving not a quadratic, we're going to be solving a cubic equation. You might have guessed one of the solutions at this point, that's okay, don't tell anyone. Keep it a secret, okay, until we reveal the process. So we have 3z minus z cubed equals 4i and we're going to be solving for z values. And we expect to get three solutions because this is cubic. The fundamental theorem of algebra says you should get three complex solutions. And don't forget, complex solutions include real solutions. Because real numbers are just a subset of complex numbers. Or complex numbers are kind of like an extension of real numbers. By defining them in, in two dimensions and then looking at real numbers as a specific case where the imaginary part is zero on the real number line. So they, they become one dimensional or whatever, something like that. <laughs> Anyways, so how do you solve this problem? I'll try to present more than one method. Let's start with something called first. So I want to invert this. I don't like z cubed being negative. So why don't we write it as z cubed? minus 3z equals negative 4i. We multiply both sides by negative 1. That's what, what I mean by invert or negate. Now, we're going to use the cubic formula, okay? You ready? To use the cubic formula, you do need the following identity. a plus b cubed minus 3ab multiplied by a plus b equals a cubed plus b cubed. You should know that this is an identity from algebra, right? Make sure to review your algebra. And... We're going to call this z, so our equation is going to be in terms of z, and then by comparing these two equations, we want, because we do have a solution for this, right, obviously, because by solving for a and b separately, we're going to be able to put it together and find z. Make sense? That's basically the gist of the cubic formula, but the question is, how do we compare these two equations? You look at the coefficient of z cubed, which is 1 in both, and the coefficient of z, which is negative 3 or negative 3ab. So this needs to be negative 3. And this needs to be the constant term, which is negative 4i. This may not always good, give you good results, but most of the time it does, because I believe we have a case called irreducible case, or is it casus irreducibilis? Something like, I can't even pronounce it. It's too hard. Uh, it's Latin, I think. Anyways, from here, ab equals 1. Positive, right? And then from the second one, a cubed, b cubed, their sum is negative 4i. Now, this is a system, you can use substitution, like replace b with 1 over a, or you can just cube the first equation, a cubed, b cubed equals 1. And then from here, you can isolate b cubed, negative 4i minus a cubed, and then here you can replace b cubed with that, right? And then that's going to give you a quadratic equation if you distribute and call a cubed equals c. Got it? That's basically the cubic formula. Not too hard, not too easy, somewhere in between, right? Let's go ahead and distribute. That is going to give us negative 4c minus c squared. Remember, when you multiply c by c, you get cc, no, c squared. <laughs> okay, equals 1. Yay, this one has a nice solution. Great. So from here, we get a quadratic, which is super duper nice. So this is basically reducing the power. But notice that one thing actually has been particularly nice. We did not have z squared in this equation. So it was already a depressed cubic, a very depressed cubic, like a cubic in depression. So how do we solve this equation? Completing the square or quadratic formula, no big deal. C equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 16 minus 4 divided by 2, that's 12, so it's going to be 2 root 3, you see all solutions are real, and by division you get negative 2 plus minus root 3. Awesome, we got two solutions for C, negative 2 plus root 3 and negative 2 minus root 3. I wanted to separate them because notice C is A cubed, but A can be, A can be, <laughs> A and B can be interchanged. Make sense? Because they basically have the same role. In other words, one of them can be a cubed, right? C is a cubed. This can be a cubed and this can be b cubed. Or vice versa. It doesn't matter again. Because remember, z is a plus b. So regardless of uh, which uh, choice you have, a plus b is unchanged or invariant, right? 
So from here, a becomes what? The cube root of 2, negative 2 plus root 3, and b becomes the cube root of negative 2 minus root 3. Don't panic. We can cube negative numbers, really, like in the real world, right? But they're just going to be negative. Okay, great. Now, we have these two numbers, and z is equal to their sum. So z is going to be the cube root of negative 2 plus root 3 plus the cube root of negative 2 minus root 3. This wasn't very helpful, was it? Maybe. I don't know. So here's the problem. We got a, the sum of two radicals, but this is not a really simple expression. I was expecting to get something like, I don't know, maybe an integer or a rational or something like that. Not a radical like this, especially with the cube roots. This is super radical. So what do you do? There's probably a way to simplify this. And please let us know if you do know, because I'm going to leave it at that and continue with the second method. Why? Because this method, I don't know, it was didn't get anywhere. Maybe it will, but I want to try something else. Okay, ready? 3z minus z cubed equals 4i. Well, in this equation, I could definitely guess and check, but here's the thing. You have z and z to the third. So if you think about it, z is probably a complex number, right? So why not replace z with a plus bi? That would make sense, wouldn't it? Let's do it. 3 times a plus bi minus a plus bi cubed equals 4i. And from here, compare these two complex numbers. How do you do that? Let's go ahead and expand the second expression. I have a cubed plus b cubed plus 3ab times a plus b. I just used the formula for a plus b quantity cubed, except replaced b with bi. And i cubed is negative i. Hopefully you know that. That means I need an i here. Uh-oh, I forgot that. Almost. Okay, so let's go ahead and simplify this further. We get 3i plus 3bi. And then here we're going to get negative i cubed, negative a cubed, sorry, minus plus b cubed i. And then this, when distributed, it's going to give you 3a squared bi. And then minus, because i squared is negative 1, 3ab squared. Beautiful. This is equal to 4i, and then what I'm going to do is put the real parts together. 3a minus a cubed minus 3ab squared. This is the real part. Plus 3b plus b cubed plus 3a squared b, and that's the imaginary part. And the whole thing is equal to 4i. Uh-oh, you know what that's supposed to mean? It means this whole thing is equal to 0 because there is no real part. It's purely imaginary. And this is supposed to be 4. Again, this is going to take a while to solve because these equations are not homogeneous. Is there a way to solve them? Probably. I don't know off the top of my head, but you can kind of give it a try. Maybe in one of the equations, we can solve for one of the variables and substitute in the, into the other one, which I don't think is going to be very easy, but it could probably be done and you should arrive at something. Well, let's, let's keep it even simple because look at it z should be what imaginary why because if you have a real part and an imaginary part then it's going to be problematic when you cube it could there be a solution for these kinds of equations where z is actually a plus b i and a and b are different from zero it could be happening i don't know it might i doubt it but here's what i'm talking about i'm just claiming that okay a0 and z is equal to bi. Let's just use it. 3bi. If I cube it, I'm going to get b cubed i cubed. i cubed is negative i, so it's going to make it positive. b cubed i equals 4i. Now take out the i. b cubed plus 3b equals 4i. Cancel out the i and yes, we get a nicer, nicer equation. Much nicer, right? Well, it was an assumption, but looks like it's working. Yay. And then from here, you can immediately tell that b equals 1 is a solution, right? Because look at the sum of the coefficients. Come on, you know that. And the next step should be dividing this by b minus 1 or, or manipulating this until we get b minus 1 as a factor. So this is going to be like this. And then finally, I'll have the 4b minus 4. And this, some people think that this is too long, but actually, if you get used to it, like me, it should be fairly easy. You can extract b minus 1. It's the same as long division. It's just shorter, I think. 
b minus 1, b squared plus b plus 4 equals 0. Oh, we're getting other solutions. Nice. We already know b equals 1. That's good. And by the way, I'll tell you what it is. But from here, we should get something else. Uh, use the quadratic formula. Because we have a formula, use it. b equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, which is 16, over 2. And that is negative 1 plus minus the root 15i divided by 2. This is b, but wait a minute. Isn't b supposed to be real? Hmm. I think so, because when we wrote uh, z as bi, b was supposed to be real. But guess what? Maybe it doesn't have to be. I don't know. So what is going to happen? b equals 1 will give you i as a solution. And the other solutions can be found by multiplying this number by i, right? Because this is b. But b wasn't real in this case. What happened? I don't know. Maybe someone can explain this. Let's go ahead and take a look at the results from Wolfram Alpha. Hopefully, they'll clarify the issue. Here we go. I think my assumption was correct. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.